why can't people understand that Professor X and Magneto were meant to be? Maybe it's because comic books epitomize the male gaze and reinforce uh, male heteronormativity and fantasy. Stop using made-up words, Brian. These are real issues. Okay, okay, A, those aren't made-up words, and two, they're comic books, Alex. It's not just comic books, Brian. It's... 11 movies? What? Maybe if... Maybe there was a franchise that wasn't made for straight white men. Maybe one made for straight, white, cis, thin, able-bodied, middle-class women. Now that's a niche that hasn't been cornered. When I started watching Supergirl, I expected some random Monster of the Week show with quirky side characters and funny quips. You let everyone that I love die! What I didn't expect was the greatest queer love story of this generation. So basically, Supergirl is this show about Kara Danvers. Essentially, Kara is a charming millennial alien. When she was about 13, her planet Krypton was dying. Krypton was a magical place, with 2010's fashion sense and 21st century gender roles, because... who cares? Since Krypton was dying, the House of El decided to send this kid named Cal el to Earth so that he could survive. But the family also decided to send this older alien named Kara to protect Cal el And apparently they're the only family from all of Krypton to have thought of doing this, I guess. Anyways, Cal el got to Earth fine, but Kara got sort of knocked off course. So Kara didn't arrive to Earth until a few... several years after Cal el But when Kara arrived to Earth, Cal el was already a grown man. He was named he was named Clark and he had an alter ego named Superman. Kryptonians have superpowers on Earth. Like laser eyes and super strength and fighting without your hair getting messed up. So while Kal-El was raised on Earth from the moment he was a baby, Kara was raised on Earth when she was already like 13. So she was aware of where she was from and she always felt like an outcast because of that. She ended up living with a nice adoptive family and made a secret identity. Until one day, she was forced to reveal to the world that she was Supergirl. And like, she became a superhero I guess. So she does stuff like meet villains, fight with her hair never getting messed up. Seriously, anyone with long hair who fights is probably going to tie it back, no? One of the people she meets is Lena Luthor, owner of L Corp. You'd think it stands for Luthor Corp, but it actually stands for Lesbian Corp. Anyways, Lena Luthor is the sister of her cousin's archenemy, queer as hell, and really bad at hiding an Irish accent. The subsidiary of my company made the part that exploded on the venture. Over the seasons, fans have, correctly, Assumed that eventually Lena and Kara were going to fly off into the sun together and get married. But I guess there's some sort of delay. On the other hand, some people are adamant that Kara is a strict heterosexual, and that her and Lena only lovingly stare into each other's eyes for funsies. Well, here on Are They Gay, we're going to examine if this is true. So like, Kara's so... vanilla. But vanilla doesn't mean straight. She's the kind of queer lady who shivers and blushes whenever Kristen Stewart appears on screen. But the show doesn't want us to think that. In fact, in the first episode, when Kara is telling Wynn about her superpowers, we get our first reference to the gays. Oh my god, you're a lesbian. Oh, Kara, that's why you're not into me. This is, this is, this is great news! I'm you not gay! You'd be surprised how many gay women I've heard that from. Like already, the writers want to make Kara have a case of the not gays. And maybe they were trying to avoid the whole queer baiting thing from the beginning by being like, All right, everyone, she's straight. Well, first of all, she just said, I'm not gay. And second of all, if she was about to come out about having superpowers, she probably wouldn't also throw in the I'm not straight. It's not her current priority. And Kara has admired other women, not just by devouring Lena with her eyes, but just sort of casually. Gorgeous, she's smart, smells nice, hell, I want to date her. And her crushes on men are very similar to the way she acts around Lena. James Olsen is this famous photographer dude that ends up being Kara's friend, and all-around stand-up guy. She develops a little crush on him, and let's just say, the look she first gave him is pretty identical to the first look she gave Lena. 
She also has a relationship with this dude named Monel in season 2. He's basically an alien dude bro. Because of course, alien species need to have the same sexist genitals that Earth has. <laughs> In the second season, he really undervalues Kara. He doesn't see her opinions as valid. You've ignored what I need from moment one today. I asked for privacy and time, and you ignored that. And I asked you to give Jeremiah the benefit of the doubt, and you ignored that too. Okay. So I don't... Okay, okay, hey, I'm sorry. That is that is two strikes on me. Okay, but let's just let's let it go. Give me a I am not baseball. And until you can learn that what I say counts, this isn't gonna work. It's really not the best and healthiest relationship. They're constantly like breaking up and getting back together. She's always seeing reasons for his flaws and he's always thinking that Kara can't fend for herself. The whole relationship is based on a lie too. Monel is from this place called Daxum and on that planet he was a prince and a slave owner. And if you haven't noticed, Slavery is pretty, pretty bad. It's pretty bad, you know, it's, it's pretty bad. He was a prince and a horrible person. And Monel lied about that. It's a relationship based on a lie and that's not good. Well, to be fair for a hot minute, Lena and Kara's relationship is also based on a lie because, you know, she hasn't revealed her superpowers to her. Well, to be double fair for a hot second, Kara has a secret identity to protect her from bad guys. Kara slash Supergirl considers Kara to be her true self. Monel hid his true self from Kara and his lie to save his image. What the hell? Is this a superhero TV show or a soap opera? Don't undermine the soap opera genre. The soap opera is a respectable genre, Brian, and I won't have you infringing on the validity of a proud subculture of the world. Maybe instead of imposing your white and Eurocentric worldview on my TV show, you should be respectful towards other cultures and actively combat the current rise in nationalism, which in itself is just a capitalist, imperial fascism condoned under a view of patriotism! And we haven't even gotten to the part where Kara and Nina jump off the cliff together in the convertible. It's bad enough you lied, but, but you being the prince? I thought you were just born on a cruel planet, but you let it! To make Daxum great again. They try to redeem Monel in season 3. It's kind of ridiculous actually. The only way Monel was able to change was by having him literally get lost in a wormhole, live in the future for 7 years, get married, move on from Kara, and then suddenly reappear in the present. The circumstances of which, by the way, he lies about to Kara. Again. I didn't apologize for that, and shocker, I apologize to you for trying to make you into a better person. I hear you. I get no, it. I don't think you do get it. I don't think you get that I gave my heart to a lying jackass who was unaware of his behavior towards me, who disrespected me at every turn, and now is this reformed person who, what, he wants to reminisce about the good times? And the fact is that Kara, in her own words, has not had the best experience with love. I don't know anything about romantic love. I, I have not had the best luck with it. But if I ever really had it, I think I'd fight for it. It's probably due to the fact that she has to hide a part of herself off to the world. With Monel, she didn't have to do that. But he's a douche bro, so like, it, it sucks. Her hiding a part of herself is very similar to the queer experience. Just to fit in, she has to hide herself. And I'm not pulling this out of my shiny butt, people. The show makes this comparison for me! Like, when Alex, Kara's adoptive sister, comes out to Kara as a lesbian, she says this. I do know how it feels to keep a part of yourself shut off. To keep it inside. And I know how lonely that can make you feel. And the way Kara reacts to Alex's coming out is also kind of, uh, weird. It's almost like she didn't understand that being queer was an option. Like, maybe it suddenly became an option. It kind of sounds like you're coming out to me. Have you felt like this before? I am so okay with it. I'm just trying to understand, okay? I am so okay with it. You're gay too? I am so okay with it. W what's different? I know you haven't been dating much but lately. This isn't because I haven't found the right guy. I am so okay with it. 
What? <laughs> I'll go more in depth to the queer metaphor later, but Kara's experience does reflect what the queer experience is to a lot of people. Kara has a big heart. She's extremely compassionate and trusting. And the fact that she's one of the only people who trusts Lena is a big thing. Okay, so maybe Lena isn't a lesbian because apparently there's this rare species of people called bisexuals, but Lena is one of those ambiguous characters that aren't cold but want to appear cold to the rest of the world. And you can't tell me that she feels no emotions because those looks that she shares with Kara practically scream I wanna She is a badass lady, woman, capital W with a Y because she don't need no man in her. I've never stood behind a man. But as loving as she is with Kara, You know, I always confuse my cunning and my emotional insecurity and thought of it all as something to be suppressed. She's always thought emotions are a weakness. Kara helps change that. They try to push her with James and stuff, but like, James thought she was evil for like, an entire season? Like, suddenly the writers were like, Hey, we haven't given James anything to do in a while. Let's just make him, uh, have a love interest. Or even, Hey, Lena has been oogling Sam and Kara for the past season. We should probably remind the audience that Lena's attracted to men. L like, it doesn't make any sense. I'll never understand the heterosexual agenda. Anyways, Lena also has trust issues. Not that she can't trust, but it's hard. Trust is hard for me too, Supergirl. But since we seem to need each other, we're just gonna have to figure it out. And the fact that she can easily do that with Kara is a pretty big deal. And a lot of fans just read Lena as queer. It's like Katie McGrath keeps forgetting that her character is straight and also that she should have an American accent. The subsidiary of my company made the part that exploded on the venture. TBH, I saw something even going on with Sam. Now that would have been an interesting plot line, as Lena helps Sam overcome the evil within her. She suddenly falls in love with her. But it's fiction, so I can read whatever I want into this. To me, Lena is queer. If I wanted to, I could propose that she's Vladimir Lenin in disguise. <laughs> So, does Lena and Kara is gay? Well, yes. No, but, but really, let's take a look at this. Kara is a person with a big heart. She easily gives it away and easily trusts. You're different, Kara. Now you see people. You understand them. And it makes me wish that I could... I... And although Lena and Kara are both powerful women, with a Y, they're just trying to make a name for themselves in the shadow of their more notorious male relative, aka Lex Luthor in Superman. Now, we could talk about the super discourse for about 13 hours, make a blog post about it, and then watch Katie McGrath videos for 16 hours, but what this fact tells us is that Kara and Lena share some sort of bond. Kara believes Lena not just because she's gonna have to clear her Google history of Lena Luthor gay rumors, but she believes Lena because she understands her on a different level, the gay one. I'm just a woman trying to make a name for herself outside of her family. And you understand that? Yeah. Lena believes in Kara as well. In fact, she's the one who gave Kara the idea to become a reporter. <laughs> what about you, Miss Danvers? I didn't see your name on the byline. Uh, well, like I said, I'm not a reporter. You could have fooled me. Suddenly. Although it's Lena and Kara who are friends, Lena hits on Supergirl as well. And honestly, if you're not at least a little bit in love with Melissa Benoist in some way, you're probably doing something wrong. Kara and Lena instantly become best friends, and Kara just bursts into Lena's office for no good reason other than to see each other and to eat each other with their eyes, and Kara always defends Lena. No matter what it looks like, she always trusts that there's something good in Lena. Well, at least in season two. Or, well, sociopaths. Either way, they, they know how to fool people. No, no. I looked into Lena's eyes. She doesn't know anything about Cadmus and her mother. I know it. Oh, what an awful thing to have to do. Well, the Luthers have never shied away from doing awful things. Yeah, but she's not like them. She has every reason not to trust Lena, but she doesn't anyways. Compare this to mon -El. Monel is a fellow alien, someone who understands her position in some ways others don't. But she can't trust him! She can trust the sister of her cousin's nemesis, but not the alien who relates to her. Honestly though, maybe Lena does understand Kara better than Monel. Maybe Lena feels like 
she's had to hide a part of herself as well. She's had to defend her right to exist, that she's not like Lex Luthor, and she's not evil like the rest of the Luthers. Kara, as an alien, also has to defend her right to exist, and to show that she's not a threat to humanity. They end up just acting as girlfriends together. I wouldn't be surprised if Lena thought they were dating. Like, she sent a bajillion flowers to Kara's office for being so nice. So my office is, is overflowing with flowers. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. Yeah, I did. Well, that's what friends are for. Yeah, I've never had friends like you before. <laughs> they even have, like, kombucha dates. Oh my god, we were gonna go try that new fermentation place. <laughs> I totally forgot. I'm I'm so sorry. There's There's just... There's a lot going on. It's okay. You don't need to explain. Kombucha can wait. Can you just imagine Lena practicing in front of her mirror for hours, figuring out ways to ask Kara out on a kombucha date? Of course, since Lena has a case of the totally not gay lol, for one episode they give her this male love interest. And it turns out that the male love interest only reinforces the fact that Kara and Lena are perfect for each other. Essentially, Lena's ex-boyfriend Elon Musk is in town, and she's going to see his presentation or something. Well, since Lena is so affected by this guy and his awesome PowerPoint presentations, she asks Kara to come give her emotional support. You know what that means. He ends up being controlled by some evil stuff, and Lena has to make a decision. Sacrifice him, her so-called love and kryptonite, or Supergirl. Now, I know this isn't Kara, this is Supergirl, but Lena's choice shows Kara Lena's values. It also shows Lena that she can only rely on one person. Kara realizes that Lena would sacrifice the people she cares for in order to save the greater good. It's a value that Kara and Lena share, and it's a difficult value for a lot of people to hold. Not even Superman shares that value with Kara. I think it goes far beyond the right thing. I couldn't have done it, Kara. You don't have to try to make me feel better. I'm not. I'm humbled by you. I'd like to think that if it came down to a choice between Lois and the world, but I don't think I could. But Lena is really affected by the whole ordeal. Lena has been abandoned by the people who have meant the most to her. She feels alone in the world and that any second, she could turn into the evil Luther she's always feared of becoming. But Kara is her anchor to goodness. Kara is the thing that keeps her afloat and reassures her. And that's a deeper connection than the silly old love that I talk about on this channel. That's a need for another person. Loss does strange things to my family and I have lost a lot of people. Well, you're not gonna lose me. You don't have to be afraid. I'm right here. And I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, promise. I will always be your friend. And I will always protect you. I promise. To Lena, Supergirl or her later love interest James or anyone else isn't the epitome of goodness. Her most valued relationship is with Kara. Well, Supergirl may have saved me, but Kara Danvers, you are my hero. <laughs> it's so apparent that Kara and Lena love each other deeply that even Mon El can see it. I can see why Kara loves you. Just imagine if Kara or Lena were a dude. People would be on that like, racist to the Republican Party. Alright, <laughs> calm down buddy. What? Have you considered that two women showing affection isn't viewed the same as other genders showing affection? You mean like a double standard? Yeah. You mean something that's wrong that should be discouraged? Of course. Wanna have sex now? Yeah. Yeah! Best friends! The relationship gets a little rocky though. See, the thing is, Lena doesn't know that Kara and Supergirl are the same person. And that secret, that lie, eats Kara up inside. While Kara and Lena's relationship is as peachy as newlyweds, Supergirl and Lena's relationship is about as sour as the three-year-old sour cream in my fridge. Whoa! I've had your back so many times. When the rest of the world was ready to pass you off as the new Lex Luthor. My friend came to me. He was alone and afraid. I had to do something. And Kara is suspicious because she thinks that Lena is hoarding kryptonite. But Lena says that it's for a good reason. And that she doesn't have any anymore. 
and Lena says that Supergirl may take it a little too personally. There's a break in trust. I just don't want one mistake to ruin our friendship, that's all. It won't. Good. We don't have a friendship, Supergirl. What you say? Kara wants to be friends with Lena as Supergirl and Kara, but Lena doesn't want this, and this hurts Kara and makes her feel like crap. Well, Kara, unless Lena's polyamorous, you can only be her girlfriend as one person. I'm sure in the fourth season this tension will be resolved, but this is kinda how we end the third season with Kara and Lena sexually frustrated. Where this will go in the next season is to be seen, but I think that we can conclude that Kara and Lena share a very, very close and unbeatable relationship. So, the connection to aliens slash superheroes and being queer is not a hard connection to make. It's, it's literally made for me. Several times. And yeah, aliens and superheroes could be a bigger metaphor for marginalized people in general. I'm a refugee on this planet. But this interpretation suits my agenda better. But Maggie says herself, as a lesbian woman of color, she feels a connection to aliens. I can relate to them, I guess. Growing up a non-white, non-straight girl in Blue Springs, Nebraska. Might as well have been from Mars. And they describe telling someone you're a superhero or that you're an alien as coming out. You know, when I came out, embraced my powers, finally letting myself be who I'm meant to be, it turned out to be the best thing I ever did. Yeah, listen, I know this is scary, but maybe it's a good thing, you know, you coming out. It's a little more complicated than that. Maybe Kara doesn't only feel like an outcast because she's an alien, but also because she's meddled in queerness. Maybe she mistook her non-heterosexual attractions for just part of being an alien. I do know how it feels to keep a part of yourself shut off. When we bury things, they come at you even harder. And I hate how I'm never gonna get to have a normal life! I know what it's like to not know which role you have to play! The fact that Kara coming out as an alien came off like a coming out as gay conversation to win should tell you a lot. Oh my god, you're a lesbian. Oh, Kara, that's why you're not into me. This is, this is, this is great news. I'm you not gay. You'd be surprised how many gay women I've heard that from. So there's this show called Jane the Virgin, and honestly, it's so good. Like, please watch it right now. But I'm talking about Jane the Virgin because I think it does the bisexuals justice. You see, there's this woman on the show called Petra. She's ambitious, and she doesn't let anyone get in her way. Basically, she's a Slytherin. She ends up making a lady friend named Jane. Not the Jane of the title, but just another Jane. Because, you know, other people in the world are named Jane. It, it, it's a thing. It started as a lawyer-client relationship, but as I watched it, I sensed something. The looks, the way of talking, the framing, the cinematography. I thought, oh, this is, this is gay. So I thought, oh, well, this is never going to happen. I mean, Petra has been established as being straight and... Maybe I'm just misreading things, <laughs> whatever. But then something happened. It became canon. Petra ended up liking Jane. They became girlfriends. And I noticed this is kind of like Supergirl. Supergirl used the same development, framing devices, lighting, cinematography. I felt like I was watching a Super Cora U come to life. Except the writers on Jane the Virgin knew what they were doing. They knew that people would read this in a certain way. But does Supergirl know what it's doing? Well, they have to. Film is a very precise art. There are no accidents in the way you frame and write dialogue and develop a relationship. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. They have to know what they're doing. Now, I would have been fine with this if maybe they acknowledged it, but then this happened. Dare I ask, though, for a recap? Is that, so, is this a bad way to start? She met a new friend and So apparently the cast doesn't dig the whole idea. Well, good thing Katie McGrath saves their ass. To be fair, usually I've done a lot of shows where there is a, a very obvious undertone 
mm. in between two female characters. Mm. And for once, I was like, it's not here. <laughs> and, wow, Little I did you wrong, know. <laughs> but, uh, we were talking about this the other day about it, and and the great thing about what we do is like any art is anybody can read into it what they want and take yeah. from it. So you can see anything, and and take from it what you like. And that's what's great about this show is that there are so many different ways to see everything. And if that's what you see in it, you take know, it take it away. Yeah. That's it's it's. At least Katie acknowledges that people see certain things in art that others may not, which is reasonable. But a lot of people see the connection. Like I said, film is a very intentional art. And I don't think that we should also reduce every single interpretation as being equal. Like I said, I could read into the art that Lena Luthor is secretly Vladimir Lenin. But that doesn't mean it's just as valid a hypothesis as it is that Kara and Lena share some sort of romantic connection. There's a purpose behind it. But if these cues weren't intentional, then they're at least valid to see. The intimacy of the scenes between Kara and Lena are real. Although many see it through a heterosexual lens, there's something there. Supergirl is hailed as being a progressive show, but honestly, eh, we could do better. Which means it's fatal for any life form with the Y chromosome. It's poisonous to men? Riley Dennis made an amazing video talking about this in depth, so I'll link her video in the description. But I'll say this, it is progressive. And that's sad. It's progressive compared to the current state of media. And that's... really bad? If a show like Supergirl, full of mostly straight, cis, white, able-bodied, thin women, is the most progressive show on TV, then maybe we have, uh, what's the word? Uh, an issue. Progress is great, but we have a long way to go. I mean, Maggie and Alex, the token lesbian couple, got like, five seconds of screen time and they broke up for such BS reasons. Do you know why they broke up? Because Alex wanted kids and Maggie didn't. Like, they were engaged. Do you not think that they might have talked about it at some point? The writers obviously just wanted some reason to have them separate. What the hell? And don't even get me started on Lena and James again. I'll link an awesome article by Alexander Ressler below, but in summary, it's obvious that this is just to give Lena more of the not gay syndrome and push her away from Kara. I was down with Kara and James too. I'm down with things that make sense. This doesn't really make sense. You know what would be a more progressive show? Showing an intense and passionate love story between two flawed but wonderful women that develops healthily over the course of time and it concludes well. Now that is something I'd pay to see. Uh, pay more to see. Honestly, I don't think it's gonna happen. I really want it to, okay? Don't get me wrong. And I think it should, and I think there's a whole lot of evidence for it, but the heterosexual agenda strikes again. If someone from Supergirl is watching, please, first of all, tell them that people with long hair usually put it up when they fight. Second of all, you have an amazing, beautiful love story at your hands. Don't waste it. I love the story between Kara and Lena. It's full of surprises, gushy moments, and overall awesome gay stuff. I haven't seen the actual writers comment a lot on the relationship, but I think something should be said. We don't need another big queer bait, Sherlock, and we don't need any more disrespect for the LGBT plus fans. In the end, like Katie McGrath said, it's up to the audience. Did Kara and Lena have a secret gay loving affair? Did they have secret crushes? Do they run off into the sunset together at the end of the show? Whether they're lesbians, bisexual, asexual, pansexual, or just friends, you decide. Dude, what's up with all these shows actively queer baiting their audience? Like, just make the gay canon or not, or just do something. Show an explicitly gay scene or just don't. It, you don't have to make some sort of subtext or throw something in there. Just represent some underrepresented minorities. I know, right? The showrunner should be actively confirming whether or not a character is gay or not with obvious actions and not just leaving it up to subtext. Exactly. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna have sex with my girlfriend. But you're still bi, right? Maybe. Well, look at the time. It's time to thank some people. Today I'd like to thank these people. And these people. Jesus Christ. Wow, I'm a big fan of your work. You want me to thank the greatest people on Earth? Okay, I will. A special thanks to Marie, Queer Coded, Leon Weigel, 
Megalomaniac 64, Isabel Blackwood, Chuck Avery, Harry Gagonis. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, and if you'd like to be in a stupid video about gay people, well, you can contribute too, and make these videos possible. If you contribute at a certain level, you can join the super secret Discord server for only gays allowed, and bisexuals, and pansexuals. And, you know what? Everyone's allowed. As long as you contribute to my Patreon, you can help out this channel and join a super secret Discord server. Super Clark is coming.